Gosh, three tips. We got to be smart. We got to be clever. We're not 25 anymore. Hey guys, Mark McKillie with Live Anabolic and today I want to give you three tips on how to build muscle after 50. Now guys, it ain't as easy as it used to be. That's why these tips are so important, right? Because man, I remember when I was in college in my 20s and even in my 30s, I could do just about anything and build muscle. It was great. <laughs> you know, I could get away with all kinds of mistakes you know, at the gym and with my nutrition, I could go out drinking and just get hammered at night and have a hangover the next day, still build muscle. I could go to Taco Bell and Pizza Hut and just eat whatever the hell I wanted and still build muscle and not get fat. <laughs> but guys, we're getting older. I just turned 60. All right. That means I need to know every single trick in the book. All right, and I need to stick with those tricks day after day, month after month. And that's the only way I'm going to basically fake out aging, all right, or trick aging and still allow my body to build muscle as I get older. So, guys, three, three tips I want to give you. And the reason we got to be smarter about this, we just, get, we just have to outwit the aging process, basically. Young guys can get away with being stupid and still look fantastic. Those older guys have got to be a little wiser. So one of the primary reasons for this is not just because we're older. I mean, what does that really mean, right? It's because our bodies don't produce our hormones nearly as efficiently as we did when we were younger. That's the main reason, actually, is our hormone levels. So testosterone being the most important hormone when it comes to building muscle and losing fat. So a lot of, a lot of guys don't take the fat part into consideration because of, you know, all the ballyhoo about, about steroids and testosterone. All right. Uh, testosterone is the number one steroid that bodybuilders take. All right. And so because of that, people think that testosterone is only good for building muscle. And while that is true, high testosterone levels or healthy testosterone levels are really important for keeping the body fat off. And they've done all these studies and the researchers don't even know exactly what's going on with this relationship between body fat and testosterone levels, but they do know that it's an inverse relationship that your body for some reason is just more efficient at using fat stores as a source of energy when you have high testosterone levels. And when you have low T levels, your body, for some reason, doesn't like to use fat as a source of energy. It just stores it and it uses carbohydrates as its primary source for energy. And so when we have high T levels, we change that balance up more in our favor. All right. So that's kind of the aging process <laughs> in a nut, in a nut bag. And you know, the fact that, you know, you guys all know that we just got to be smarter about this as we age because we just can't get away with all the crap that we did when we were young and still look good. All right, let's start off with tip number one. And guys, this is the least fun and most painful of the tips. <clears throat> and that is intensity. So when you're working out, guys, you can't just go through the motions. <clears throat> so if you're looking at your workout, and you just start checking off the exercises as you do them, okay? And you think you're accomplishing something, well, you're you're not. Now you you are up until a certain point, but but you're not going to progress past that point. You really have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And that means pain. I mean, you, everybody's heard the old saying, no pain, no gain. Well, it really is true, okay? But the pain is just so fleeting. It's so temporary, right? I mean, when you're going through a set of 10 to 12, maybe 15 reps, how long does that take? 30 seconds, maybe? All right. So in the first half of the 30 seconds, the first 15 seconds, you don't feel pain. You're pushing. It doesn't hurt. You're just going through the motion. All right. It's the end of the set, the last four or five reps, all right, where the real pain is. And that's because you're building up a lot of lactic acid in your muscles, all right? When you're lifting heavy weights and you're pushing yourself hard, when you're pushing yourself to either failure or close to failure on each set, all right? And that lactic acid is painful. But as soon as you put the weights down, it doesn't hurt. It stops almost immediately. 
And during your rest period is when you're pumping blood through the muscles and it's flushing out that lactic acid, which is a waste byproduct. Okay. And it goes to the liver. The liver converts it back to glucose, which is a form of energy and it sends it back to your muscles and you use it all over again. So guys, you have to push yourself and that means you got to keep track. Okay. So keep track of your workouts. You don't have to be overly scientific. Okay. But you, you need to try to increase the weights occasionally from week to week or month to month. Okay. If you just lift the exact same amount of weight forever, you will plateau. So keep track of how much weight you're lifting. Now let's say you can't put on any more weight. All right. Because you either don't have enough weight in your house. Okay. Or the next level of weight is just too heavy to do with good form. Okay. Just do more reps. So if you've been doing 10 reps with say 30 pounds, try to do 12 reps and then push yourself, you know, a month or two from now, try to do 14 reps. And then when you can start doing 14 reps with 30 pounds, then it's time to go up on weight. Now you need to go to 35 pounds, but you're back down probably closer to 10 reps. All right. So there's lots of different ways to increase the intensity and push yourself out of the comfort zone. Um, another way to do it, instead of increasing the number of reps, increase the number of sets you do. So instead of three sets of 10, do four sets of 10. All right. So there's lots of different ways to do this. And the reason we're pushing ourselves hard and the reason you want the intensity and the pain. Okay. That is a good thing is because we're, we're, we're actually damaging the muscle fibers. Okay. So if you just kind of, you know, put in a half ass effort, you're not going to really damage those muscle fibers. All right. They're, you're not pushing them beyond their limits. That's, that's the whole goal. And when we do that, we create millions of tiny microscopic tears in your muscle fibers. Okay. And that's, that's partially what's going on the day after and two days after remember there's that pain also. So you got the pain when you're in the middle of a set that's lactic acid, the pain over the next couple of days, is called delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS, D-O-M-S. And that is just the inflammation that's going on inside your body from all the damage that you did. And that's also a good thing, right? So if you're not feeling, and you still can build muscle if you're not feeling sore days after, okay? So your body does tend to get used to this stuff and compensate. But the more we damage those muscle fibers, the more your body overcompensates and overcorrects. What happens is when they do come back, when the muscle fibers are repaired, all right, they come back slightly bigger and slightly stronger than they were before. And it's very slight, but you do this day after day after day, month after month, it just adds up. It's a cumulative effect. So you can build muscle by being consistent and pushing yourself, increasing the intensity. All right, guys, tip number two, not nearly as painful as tip number one. That's the good news. The bad news is it's still kind of difficult to do and it requires a lot of basically dedication on your part. Uh, and that is you need to eat more protein. Uh, I know that is a problem that I encounter and if I'm encountering, I'm sure you do too. So guys, this is the deal. Your body uses protein to repair those damaged muscle fibers that we caused in tip number one. And so if we're not giving our body enough protein to repair all those damaged muscle fibers, then you're not going to get as much bang for your buck. So your muscles will still grow. You'll still get, you know, better and you'll still get stronger. But instead of getting a hundred percent out of your workouts, you may be only getting 60 or 70% out of your workouts because your protein intake just isn't enough for those muscle fibers to fully recover like they would or like they would like to. If they had enough nutrients feeding those muscle fibers and protein is the key. All right. So how much protein? All right. Well, guys, it's kind of all over the board. I would say for most of the people our age, if you can get seven tenths of one gram, so less than one gram of protein per pound of body weight, you're doing pretty good. Now for you guys that are really serious that, that, you know, aren't just doing 45 minute workouts, but you might be doing hour, hour and a half workouts, five, six days a week. And you really want to put on muscle. You guys probably need to be closer to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And so let's say I weigh 200 pounds. 
That means at seven tenths of a gram, I would have to get about 140 grams of protein, all right, on a daily basis. So how do you know? All right, well, this is kind of a pain too, but it's only temporary pain, all right? You gotta keep track. All right, you don't have to keep track of your food every day. All right, it's no big deal. You don't have to do it over the long term. You guys kind of know how you eat day in and day out. All right, I eat basically more or less the same stuff on a regular basis. I mean, some days, yeah, it's different. But, but guys, pick a typical day out of your week, all right? And write down every single thing you eat that day. All right, and as you're writing it down, try to, if it's, if it's in a package, look on the back of the package and get the nutritional information, all right? And you need to keep track of not just what you ate, but how much of it you ate. Because sometimes it'll say one serving size is a cup of cereal, okay? Eight ounces of cereal. Well, you might be eating 10 or 12 ounces of cereal or, or six ounces. So you just, you're gonna need to measure your cereal, but just that one day, right? <laughs> keep track of that, write down how much cereal, and then at the end of the day, you, you can go back and look up all the protein if you want, but keep track of everything throughout the day, all right? And then add it up, and that will tell you, of course, how many grams of protein you're getting. And if you do it once or twice, maybe even three times on different days, you will know really easily and really quickly, you know, basically how much protein you're getting on a regular basis. So you'll know if you're like, oh gosh, today I really didn't, you know, I only had a lot of carbs and a lot of fat. I had that pizza. How much protein was on that pizza? Well, the pepperonis, but hell, that's, those are small. That's only a small percentage of the pizza. Most of the pizza is carbohydrate and fat, all right? You eat a cheeseburger, a big old thick half pound cheeseburger, that's got a lot of protein on it. Got some cheese on there. Cheese has got protein in it, all right? The lettuce, tomatoes, the onions on there, those are all veggies fantastic for you. No protein, but but fantastic to eat. Lots of micronutrients in those veggies. You want that. The bun, not so great for you. It's carbohydrates. It's processed, but it's just two pieces of a bun. Not a big deal, all right? So if you guys are trying to lose fat while you're putting on muscle, eat the cheeseburger without the bun, and that's a fantastic meal, okay? So guys, you got to get enough protein. Otherwise, you're going to end up pushing yourself really hard in the gym and not seeing the results that you expect or want. All right, tip number three you're gonna like <laughs> because it's the easiest, and that is sleep. Everybody wants to sleep. All right, now it's easier said than done, I realize. All right, some of you guys have got crazy schedules. Some of you guys have got sleep problems, okay? So anyway, this is the deal with sleep. When we were young, once again, we could get away with just screwed up sleep schedule, all right? We could go out and get drunk as can be at night and stay out till two, three o'clock in the morning and wake up the next day at eight or nine and, you know, just kind of go through your hangover but, and still hit the gym and still build muscle. Guys, sleep is when your body produces the majority of the testosterone that your body produces throughout the entire course of the day. So, so the vast majority of testosterone is produced at night when you're sleeping. Same thing goes with all your other hormones. All your hormones are really going crazy and doing good things late at night when you're sleeping. And if you're not getting sleep, enough sleep, your body's not producing enough of those hormones. And those hormones help us not just build muscle, but also keep the fat off, all right? So this is, this is why this tip is so easy. And it's because <laughs> it's just a pill. All right, so we got some phenomenal supplements, guys. This is called Anabolic Reload PM. So we have a we have a daytime version of this and a nighttime version, okay? So this is not just a testosterone booster. It also is a sleep aid. So for you guys that are having problems sleeping, really give this a try, all right? It's a fantastic. And the other thing is, it's not gonna work for everybody, all right? And it's not free. So that's a dilemma, right? Uh-uh. We got the best guarantee in the entire fitness industry. I mean, by far the best. So if it doesn't work for you, just let us know, okay? If it's not working after a couple of months, you'll, you'll know, okay? Send us an email and tell us. Just be polite about it, and we'll refund your money. You know, no questions asked. You don't have to send the bottle back. You don't have to mail anything. It, you know, everybody else makes you mail this stuff back, and it's a big pain in the butt, and you got to pay the shipping charges. Uh-uh. We don't do any of that. So this is a basically no risk guarantee and it's just a pill 
You don't have to spend an extra 30 minutes, you know, doing some high intensity <laughs> interval training workout or anything. And the thing is guys, click the link below that will take you to our website because we have a, a really well done website with all of our supplements on it. And just, just read through our website on anabolic reload PM. Okay. The nighttime version. Um, just read through it because it explains all the ingredients in it and why we put those ingredients and what they do for you. All right. So, and then also scroll down below that at the very bottom of the page is all the customer reviews. All right. These are real people who've bought. Okay. And they, you know, basically write their opinion about it and give us a certain number of stars. So we got dozens and dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds now uh, of reviews on all of our different supplements. And so, Guys, if you don't try it, you'll never know if it's going to help you. And all of our genetics are different, plus all of our nutrition intake is different. So if your genetics and nutrition are such that you would benefit from this stuff, you'll love it. Some guys are eating fantastic. They got fantastic nutrition. They got great sleep. They already have naturally high testosterone levels. You guys won't benefit. You won't feel a difference and we'll just give your money back. But most guys are not like that. Most guys are going to love this stuff. And then finally, guys, three tips. We got to be smart. We got to be clever. We're not 25 anymore, but if you stick with them and never give up on yourself, I promise you can build muscle after 50.